Okay, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're here for the finale of Oregon Season 1. <sighs> it's been a long journey, a long journey of trying really hard and failing in a lot of cases to analyze these characters. Um, but even so, it has been such a joy. Like, genuinely, it is so much fun to sit here and really try and dive into what makes these characters the way they are. Different instances, different events happening. It's been a fantastic season. I have really... Really, really, really love this first season. And so I'm beyond excited to see where season two and season three take me. Of course, I still have the OVA, so I'll do a video for that. But this is the conclusion to season one. Uh, last episode was so good. So good. Hikigaya uh, kind of doing a social... Uh, as I saw a lot of the comments calling it. Um, and put, throwing himself under the bus completely to get Sagami back in there. Just... A fantastic episode all around. Um, so I honestly, I just want to get straight into the finale. So if you want to see my full thoughts on everything that happened in that episode, you can go check out the reaction. Without further ado, let's hop straight into Oregon Season 1, Episode 13. Oh god, it's like uh, the cults of the sports festival, that's what it's called. Oh, he's on the first aid team. To participate in not participating. <laughs> He's speaking this monologue out loud to himself. Uh, in fact, you could say it is necessary for someone not to experience what others do. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's technically true. <laughs> Therein lies the problem. This is the class president. <laughs> oh, they were so awkward. Oh man, last time seeing this OP, unless they play in the OV, which I think a lot of shows generally do. What a journey this season's been, man. Getting to know all these characters and all the events that have happened. It's been quite the roller coaster. But we've come, honestly, I would say we've come a long way from where we started. Before we get into the episode in earnest, there's two things I want to talk about. So, I just kind of happened to be watching someone else's Oregaio reactions uh, earlier today. When I was watching them, I came across episode 6. Now, there's a certain line in episode 6 that really piqued my interest that technically doesn't matter anymore as we go forward, but I just thought it was a really cool detail that I hadn't caught when I first watched episode 6. Yukino, whenever she is trying to reconcile Yui and Hikigaya, says, it is neither of your fault, you're both victims. She then says the blame should be put on the person who caused the incident. And in which we now know, she was the one in the car, so she was talking about herself. Even though she didn't cause the incident, obviously she felt guilt over it as she didn't mention anything about it to Hikigaya. And as we heard in the last episode, which this also helped me kind of analyze the ending of last episode a lot better, the conversation between Hikigaya and Yukino, she was discussing that the, like, because Hikigaya was talking about how she does actually lie, and she was just saying that I didn't know you then, but I do know you now. So that's just such good writing. It's such good writing, man. This show is so good. I did say two things, didn't I? I've kind of forgotten the other thing I wanted to talk about. That was mainly... There was definitely something else I wanted to talk about, but I, it's slipping my mind now. Maybe I'll put it in, like, post or something when I edit this. Looking for ideas to make an, athlet to make an athletics festival a blast. Also, it's my last festival, so I want... So I want to win if I can. Megu Megu. I don't think that's a character we met. Also, Hikigaya is now sitting on the side of the table. They're all sitting on the same side of the table. That's never happened before. Uh, before it was Yukino at the edge of the table, Hikigaya at the edge of the table, and Yui was sitting in between them. Now they're all on the same side. Wonder if that's like a visual representation showing that they've gotten closer. Maybe. I could be looking too deep into that, but I feel like that's what it would mean. Oh boy. <laughs> Seems like our whole group is gonna be sitting down. <laughs> Who'd go a? Oh god, he guys picking out one guy from his younger days. They said gross when he handed them the baton. What is he supposed to do? What is he just supposed to run the whole relay race by himself? That's not how a relay works. What do you mean, ew? He has no choice but to hand the baton to you. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that sound like, sounds like it would have been rough. Oh, hello, class president. 
What? Oh, that's her. Oh, that's right. Her name was like Me Megu. Was it just Megu Megu? I could have sworn there was something else at the end of the Megu, but maybe not. Meguri, I don't know, something. Maybe not. She did say this, her la this is her last year, so. God. This girl, I know in the- f I watched the last few episodes. You interacted with Hikigaya on several different occasions in the committee for the cultural festival, and you still don't even know his name? How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't know either of their names. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was not a compliment. She's got to say the name a couple times to remember it. And... <laughs> uh oh, Yuri's upset with them. Shiro Megari. Okay, I so I got the Megari part right. Wow, I'm actually surprised I managed to remember that. But it's Shiro Megari. Okay, <laughs> Yuri being jealous there was cute. None of you participated, did you? Because <laughs> as we literally just heard, none of them are athletic enough to participate in any of the events, so they just all avoided them. <laughs> so she came to the service club to get some ideas. Hey, nice! We're all on the same team. This girl has a little bit too much school spirit. <laughs> That's the same reaction they all gave her in the beginning when she did that exact same thing. <laughs> I like this soundtrack. The little just... Is that a tuba? What instrument would that be? It's just doing like one honk back and forth and I was just bobbing my head to it. I forget what the instrument's called. It, would it be a trombone? It might be a trombone. I don't know. I don't know how, how at each separate instrument sounds. <laughs> yep. She set them up to have to help somebody again. Feels like she's in charge of a lot of stuff. <laughs> you gotta try not to laugh back there. Oh! Ooh, he's already got something. Damn, immediately shut down. <laughs> Kids who like rice will sue our asses? What? <laughs> Well, let's two ideas down. Does anybody on the other- Does anybody on the right side want to give an idea? It's literally just been Yui and Yuki now. Can we get, like, some ideas from the people who are actually on the athletics committee? <laughs> oh, okay, there's an idea. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what did that say? Ball sacking? What are you just stuffing balls into a sack? Because it does say suggestive next to it. So... <laughs> Decathlon, decameron? De what is that? What is a decameron? I know what a decathlon is, but what is a de- Also, like, de a decathlon at a, <laughs> a sports festival would be insane. <laughs> He'd be killing everybody. A decameron. I want to look that up. I want to know what a decameron is. Decameron. It seems like it's a book? That's how the- Decameron? De decameron? Is that what it's called? Like a decameron? What is a decameron? It's just a book. How would you incorporate a book to a festival? I literally looked it up. It's just a book. Uh, Alright. If you guys want to clarify it for, clarify that for me, feel free. I, I'm not even going to try and look into it more. Chim Chim Cherry? <laughs> oh my god, how long have they been here? <laughs> she sounds so dejected. I want to see some of those ideas. Decathlon, Decameron, Boxers, Ing. No idea what that means. Body Cherry, Chim Chim Cherry, Okus Cherry, Three Legged Race, Two Girls, One. <laughs> now, hang on a second. I see those three dots at the end of that line. You can't fool me. Three Girls, One What, huh? Three Girls, One What? Or not Three Girls, Two Girls, One What, huh? Huh? <laughs> I see you guys. Yeah, <laughs> she's getting mad at him for not saying anything. The right person in the right place. <laughs> There's no point in someone who can't do something trying to do that something. Reasonable. These three aren't athletically 
uh, inclined to be a part of the sports festival in the first place, so asking them to come up with ideas for the sports festival is not the best idea. So you know what we should do? We should ask some, somebody who's actually involved in, like, sports. It's not meant to be a diss to any of them three. They just all admitted at the beginning that they're not very conscious of, like, sports and sports festivals and things like that. They don't really care about them. <laughs> We're outsourcing our service job. <laughs> Why are these two blo Why'd they both start blushing about that? Oh, God. How are these two pros? <laughs> these two feel like the last people who would be pros at athletics. She has an absurd yaoi. Ya yaoi? Is that how you pronounce it? Yaoi fetish? And he is an extreme Chunibio. What part of those two characters screams athletic genius? <laughs> yeah, here we go. So they're just gonna have them suggest the most absurd ideas until one sticks. Because both of these two, I get it now. I get it now. Both these two like to go on and on about their fantasies, right? So eventually if they continue going on and on about their fantasies, we'll get a good idea in there somewhere. <laughs> he put Yui's face on that. <laughs> Where did they get this costume from? I love this soundtrack. <laughs> He just beat him up. <laughs> Sports festival day is here. I'm very curious what they ended up coming up with. <laughs> oh, now they gotta win. The last time we might see this transition too. Of course, Hayam was a beast at everything. Yep. What do you know? So, oh, and he's on white team too. That's not great. Ooh, down by 50. I don't really know how... Scoring works for Japanese sports festivals. I've seen, I think, like two in anime ever. This one, the one from Horimiya, The Missing Pieces, and then the one from Classroom of the Elite Season 2. None of which really shed much light onto how this onto how the scoring works, but maybe maybe I'll get some more insight here. Oh, they're all part of the broadcasting. They're not competing in any events. All of them are jealous. Oh god. Is Zaimoku's about to pop off? Because he's <laughs> upset that... Sorry, what did that say? I was gonna say because Zaimoku's is gonna pop off because he's upset that <laughs> Ayama's got all the girls around him. The girls Chiba shoulder top engagement. No idea what the f*** that means. Chiba Sen for short. Oh, okay. He can't compete. He's, he's the production supervisor. Okay, good to know. I thought he was gonna maybe gonna like show us some hidden athletic skill, but of course not. <laughs> Oh my god, where did they even get these costumes in? <laughs> oh, hello Kawasaki. Oh. <laughs> these two are, these two are too good for each other, man. <laughs> Zaimokiza and um oh what's her name? Oh my god. I feel so bad for forgetting her name. She's been in so much of the show at this point. I apologize for forgetting her name. But those two are like two peas in a pod, the way they both like go on and on about their fantasies with absolutely zero shame. <laughs> okay, <laughs> three peas in a pod, actually. I guess we got Saki. I thought her name was Kawasaki, but no, it is Kawasaki. They're just calling her Saki Saki as like a nickname sake. <laughs> because I like it. Yeah, these two are just two peas in a pod. Oh, so these two are actually participating. <laughs> oh god, what did he promise? Oh god, so it seems like, seems like this promise you can just talking about was something he did not fully agree with. <laughs> they just kind of forced it on him. Wonder what he's going to be participating in. What on earth is happening here? Of course Yumiko is on the other team. This is definitely something that came out of the mind of a Chinibio. This is exactly the competition that came out of the mind of a Chinibio. Oh my god! Oh god! <laughs> Evina, there we go, that's her name. Oh, completely whiffed. So, this game was also in Classic Mythic Elite Season 2, if you guys ever watched that. This was one of the main events. I think it was also in My Hero, weirdly enough. Yeah, this was also in My Hero Academia. And it was also in Horemia. 
So this doesn't feel as much of a, an original idea as I was originally thinking. This is in like every sports festival where they make like, um, I don't know what they usually call it, but they obviously, what they're doing here, they stack one person on top and have like three, four people carry them and they have to try to snatch the other people's headbands. You snatch, you take that person out of the game. If you, whichever team is left standing wins. I've seen this game enough times to understand it by now. <laughs> oh my God, they all tripped. Wow, red team's dominating. Oh my god, poor Yui. Yukino is absolutely dominating. That wasn't even close. Wasn't even close. Look at that. Little high fives. Look at us. All three of us are good friends. I don't know why it took me so long to hold up three, or I don't know why it was so difficult for me to hold up three fingers there, but look at that. All of us are three. See, these, they called them three, three. Oh my god, can I speak. They called them three peas in a pod earlier. Yukino, Yui, and Hikigaya are also three peas in a pod, as we just saw there. The little, the little high fives. What is he participating in? Oh, God. You're saying that into the mic, Ebina. Yes, thank you for smacking her. Totsuka! Hello! So Totsuka is a team captain for our team. <laughs> I, I, I sincerely hope this bit continues all the way through season two. Please. I love this bit so much. It's so funny. <laughs> Even all the guys in the back have, are blushing too. I may be the queen. Oh, man. Of course I am as the captain over there. Everyone on the red team looks kind of tired out. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> They're all looking at him like he's insane, which he is, but <laughs> I feel like this might end up getting them hyped up. Oh god, they're listening to this. Oh my god, that actually worked. He actually got them all hyped up. Hayama's gonna be a problem, man. Oh my god. Oh, I want to say this was, uh, I want to say this was in Classroom of the Elite 2. <laughs> I want to say this was in the second, I don't know why I keep making comparisons to other sports festivals I've seen across anime, but I, I'm doing it. So I think this was also there, but it was a much more, <laughs> much more violent because a lot of people in Classroom of the Elite are psychos. <laughs> <laughs> they both stopped. Oh, what? <laughs> Everybody's just passed out. Okay. I think that's the fifth time this subtitling has said that. <laughs> what is that? What is that? He's been carrying that around all episode. Oh my god, why is he so beat up? He's acting like a shonen pro tag. <laughs> this man, Hikigaya, had that white rap so he could fake being on the white team. Then again, Hayama knows that he's not on the white team. He knows he's on the red team, so... Hayama, Hayama is the only possible person who could stop Hikigaya because, as we know, Hikigaya doesn't stand out, so nobody's gonna recognize that he was supposed to be on red team, but now he's over here on their team because nobody ever recognizes or acknowledges him in the first place. The only person who would acknowledge him is probably gonna be Hayama. <laughs> oh my god. Are people running away from him? Oh no, that's just people fighting. And he just walks right by. Stealth Hickey. <laughs> wait! No way, right? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. He just called himself by you, the nickname Yui gave him. He is, for the entire season one, always been against being called Hickey. Throughout the first several few episodes, he was like, stop calling me Hiki. Of course, at some point, he got close enough with her that he just let her call him that. But he's never once, like, acknowledged it himself. He literally just called himself Hiki. I never would have expected that from him. Yep, of course, Hayama. Yeah. The one person who would notice. <laughs> what is happening? Yeah, all the guys just turned and walked away. <laughs> There's always been something wrong, my man. Yeah, don't think too highly of me now. Come 
God, the big words this episode. Earlier we had dysphemisms. <laughs> oh my, I'm going to look that up too. A derogatory or unpleasant term used instead of a pleasant or neutral one such as loony bin for mental hospital. Oh. So it's just like you take a you take like a neutral or pleasant term and you flip it on its head and describe it in a way that's derogatory. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh my god, is that because I actually about to do something? <laughs> I'm mobilizing one man. They went decoy to decoy to decoy. Ooh, Zagamok is finally gonna do something useful. I'm sorry, I've been on him way too much. He's really not that bad of a character. He's just a little bit loud as far as Chunibios go, but maybe he'll actually do something here. Oh my god, they're running at him like a shonen. <laughs> is this gonna be another plot? Oh my god! <laughs> He's actually like a beast. Hey, he touched the pole! And down it goes. He did it! To be fair, Zaimoku says, like, two t like, this is not meant to be an insult. It's gonna sound like it is, but I swear it's not. He's, like, two times bigger than everybody else, so of course he's gonna be able to overpower them fairly easily. And when he gets in his Chunibyo mode and starts thinking he's, like, some shonen protagonist, of course, of course he's gonna barrel through anybody in his way. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Had a feeling that Totsuka Hug was gonna make uh, Ed, 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 Ebina? Uh, yeah, they called her Ebina. That was her name. <laughs> it's gonna make Ebina nosebleed. Red team takes the victory. Despite all of Hayama's efforts to carry the team. Oh. Oh, they disqualified him because Hikigai. Oh no! <laughs> I thought it would be fine because he took it off and like didn't wear it anymore. But no, they still disqualified him because he wore it in the first place, which, yeah, that's reasonable. <laughs> wow, for once, everybody was watching Hikigaya. Oh! 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 Now hang on. Hang on a second. <laughs> Yui noticed him pulling, or, or, Yui didn't even, you were watching too, so Yui saw him pull the bandage out, but then noticed that, oh hey, Yuki no almost also saw that. Weird, and Yuki no got really flustered from being called out for watching Hikigaya do that. <laughs> wow, switching the, switching the uh, topic there, both Yui and Yuki no were caught watching him. <laughs> He's like, what the hell were you two watching me for? And they're just like, yeah, Megri Senpai was so happy despite the fact that we lost. Just totally brushing it off so they don't have to talk about it. Wow, look at them. They're actually upset about losing. Aww. <laughs> Once again, it's like I said in the beginning of the episode, they're all sitting on the same side of the table now. It's no longer Yukino is directly opposed to Hikigaya, it's now they're all on the same side. Which I think is to signify after this entire season, the, t the entire misunderstanding about the Yukino in the car and then Hikigaya saving Yui's dog. That is all cleared up and I feel like them being on the same side of the table is this show's way of saying they're all on the same page now. I feel like, I feel like that's what the show's going for here. I could be off base with that but that's kind of what it's seeming like to me. Side story, and so their festival will never end. So I guess, t realistically speaking, last episode was the finale. This is technically just a side story they tacked in at the end that doesn't have anything to do with the uh, ongoing plot that we saw last episode. So overall, I'll, I'll consider episode 12 to be the finale of the season, and this is kind of just a fun side story to conclude it all off with. And then, of course... I've got the OVA as well, so I'll probably watch that sometime soon as I head into season two. That was a really good episode, though. Let's see if there's a special ending. There is. Ooh, a special song for the ending, too. Ah, uh, it's gonna go off of a lot of the moments from the beginning. We really have come such a long way from the beginning of this show. Like, it has been quite the journey with these characters. All of them have grown in their own way, even if only subtly. Like, with Higaya, he really hasn't grown all that much. As, as far as a character growth point, 
He hasn't gone all that far. I have a feeling we're going to get further with him. We got a lot of development for Yukino. Got some development for Yui. Learned a lot about Hayama. And there's, I'm sure there's more to come for a lot of the side characters as well. Like, I feel like uh, Kawasaki, we're going to see more of her for sure. Because we still like barely any of her. I feel like we're going to see more of her. I'm just excited for season two, honestly. This is a great first season. It was very, very, very enjoyable. Oh yeah, we've also got that date. You see that on screen there? We've got the we've got Yui and Hikigaya's date. Whether they'll call it a date or not is still up for grabs, but hey, that date is still out there. I guess we'll see that next season. I actually think the song was used earlier in the season. It might not be a new song. All right. Yep, there's no end credit scene where it's like going over text for the next episode because that is the end of season one. What a season. I really, if you want my true thoughts, I love season one it took me a little longer to get through it than i would have liked honestly um i got really busy at some times and so i had to take some breaks every now and then but we're through it we're finally through season one and i'm beyond excited to dive straight into season two here probably in a few days i'll probably start getting into season two but we'll see fantastic season absolutely loved all the character development i just find it so much fun to have a show, a show that is so well written as this one that I'm able to really dive deep and really dive in, in and analyze these characters to the best of my abilities. I don't personally think I'm very good at analyzing shows. It's just not, I don't know. It's not something I, I think I'm very good at. I really do appreciate all of your compliments when you tell me that <laughs> when, I, when you tell me that I'm good at analyzing because I personally don't find myself to be that great. But anyway, enough of that. Putting that aside, this show as a whole was, first season was fantastic. I know the second and third season were animated by a different studio, so I'm excited to see the new style. I honestly really like this style. I think it did a really good job. I, I liked how the, I like how the characters looked. It did a really good job at portraying their emotions. I think facial expressions with this style were done extremely well. It was very um, intriguing for me to try and analyze what their faces meant because I know a lot of you guys have told me that that's a pretty big detail in this show is facial expressions. Not everything is going to be said by said with words in this show. You have to analyze what their faces are, what what emotions are being driven through those faces. And I think this season did a fantastic job with that. Um, but I think I just want to thank you guys for taking this journey on season one with me. And uh, I'll see you guys right when we hop into season two. Uh, of course, I've got the OVA, so you'll see that here in a minute whenever I record that. But um, yeah, thank you guys uh, for watch for taking this season one journey with me. And I hope you'll be along for the ride for season two as well. But I think that is going to wrap it up for my reaction to Orgo season one, episode 13. I hope you guys did enjoy, and I hope you all have a good day.